When you hear the word decluttering, you might think, oh yeah, my house would look so great if I finally decluttered. And then the anxiety and the overwhelm kicks in. Well, you don't have to feel freaked out when you hear that word. Today, I'm gonna share with you six decluttering secrets, ways to help you declutter much more efficiently. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you have things you need to declutter from your home. Sometimes you get something, you buy it or it's given to you and you think, well, I can't get rid of that. It was expensive or I spent a lot of money on it or someone bought it for me and it cost them a lot of money. Well, that is what we like to call here consumer's guilt. And basically it's when you feel bad about how much money you've spent on something, so you keep it. But really the only reason you are keeping it is because you have that guilt. And that's ridiculous. So go around your house, find those things that you're just hanging on to because you think, well, I spent money on it, so I should keep it. If you needed it, you would use it. If you're not using it, it's time to get rid of it. Donate it and you will feel free. Dr. Maker here to solve your case of containeritis with a very simple antidote. All you have to do is look at the stuff that you're using to store your stuff. And if you feel the need to buy more storage containers, more bins, more baskets, more shelves, well, the problem really isn't how much storage space or storage items you have. The problem actually lies in how much stuff you have that you need to store. So before you run out and start buying more containers and shelves, think about what you have in those containers and shelves or what you're trying to store Slim that down first and then reassess your storage container needs. You know that saying, out of sight, out of mind? Well, it might work for a lot of things, but it does not work for clutter because let me tell you, just because you can't see the clutter doesn't mean the clutter does not exist. In all of our homes, we have black holes. Yes, we do. Clutter black holes. And it's sort of those places that you don't really see or think about, but where your clutter eventually kind of ends up. So think about them. The tops of your cupboards, the area under your bed that you think nobody sees, but you know it's there. So in my house, that happens to be this little creepy area under the stairs the cats always want to run into. It's full of, I don't know, old luggage. We have old computers in there, an old ceiling fan, uh, paint, tiles, like all this crap that we literally never use. And it just lives in this black hole. So I'd love to know in the comments down below, where is your clutter black hole at home? And the thing that I want you to do is go to that space, kiss the frog, look at it. It's ugly, it's scary, but approach it and start decluttering it. I know it's something Chad and I are going to be doing in that disgusting, scary clutter black hole area under our basement stairs. Parents with young kids, this one is for you. A lot of you guys tell me that you are completely overwhelmed by the amount of toys that you have, and then God forbid a birthday or a holiday comes around and you are just bombarded with more toys. Well, there is a solution for that, and it's a great way to teach your kids how to declutter from a young age. You see, kids don't need 450 toys to be entertained. They need a few that they love. Now, there are lots of different options that you can use to sort of help slim down toys, but a really great method is if 10 new toys come in, then your kids have to pick 10 toys that they wanna give away to other kids. So it has a nice charitable element to it, which I love. It allows you to kind of keep control of the flow of stuff coming into your house so that you're not completely overwhelmed and overburdened with toys. And it also helps teach your kids the idea of decluttering and keeping things slim. When I was 20 years old, I went to a tattoo parlor and I got a tattoo on my tush and it was a very impulsive thing that I did. And since then I've learned that there's this kind of rule about getting tattoos and that is you find the tattoo, you kind of wait 30 days, you think on it and then if you still want it, you get the tattoo. Well, the same thing applies for stuff that you're thinking about buying. If there is something that's really caught your eye and you love it and you want it, 
wait on it. Wait 30 days. If you can't wait 30 days, wait two weeks. The point is give yourself a little bit of a breather between when you see and fall in love with something and when you actually buy it. That will give you the time to sort of decide, does this make sense for me to have? Do I really need this? Do I really want this? So recently I bought a moto leather jacket. I've been wanting one for ages and I had tried one on uh, about six months ago and it was gorgeous, but it was expensive. So I thought, you know what? I'll wait on it a little bit. And then I kept thinking about that leather jacket and I ended up finding one that was less expensive and honestly, a lot nicer. So sometimes it really does pay to wait. It's so easy to get distracted when you're doing something that you like. Imagine how much easier it is to get distracted when you're decluttering things you're already trying to avoid doing. So what I recommend is this, don't have your TV on, don't be on the phone, don't have anything by you that's going to distract you. So no computer, no social media, nothing like that. Instead, focus on the task at hand. You can either say, I'm gonna get through this room before I pee, eat something, pick up the phone, whatever it is, or you can say, I'm gonna be here for 30 minutes and get as much done as I can. Those are two great options. They really help you stay on track. Now, if you want some entertainment, frankly, I cannot do this kind of work if my ears and brain are not being interested by something. So I'll either listen to music, a podcast, or an audio book. I'd love to know in the comments down below, what are your decluttering secrets? What do you do to help part ways with clutter? We've made a lot of different videos about decluttering, but I really felt like I shared some gems with you guys. So I wanna see your gems in the comments down below. Here are a couple of other videos I think you're going to love. And if you wanna learn more about decluttering or cleaning, you can visit cleanmyspace.com. There's a button down there that lets me know you care. So click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.